Hi, my name is Adome. Today I will be teaching you how to do scene extension using Adobe After Effects and Photoshop Beta, the generative fill tool in specific. For context, I recently started bouldering a few months ago and as soon as I stepped into the gym for the first time, it instantly struck me as the perfect location for this vision I had of these infinity fractal psychedelic bouldering wall extension scenes. One of the best things about the bouldering wall in the context of this effect is that you only have to think about the X and Y axis, not so much the Z axis, which is the depth. Also, the look of the bouldering wall is perfect for this effect because it's just a bunch of randomized plastic holds, so it lends itself very well to the expansion AI process, as well as the fact that it helps you hide the mask stitching very well. Also lighting inconsistencies, it just helps with blending the original footage and the rendered photo together. That being said, the techniques in this video can be used for scenes other than bouldering. You just need to spend some time intentionally thinking about how you want to set up the scene and how you're going to get around any of the issues that might be presented to you. Who knows? how many days it is before the AI apocalypse is upon us, right? So let's not waste any time. So yeah, step one is in After Effects. I bring in the clip that I'm going to be using. This is of me and my high level bouldering skills. You can see it's taken on a tripod, so it's locked off, no movement. This is key, unless you plan on doing complex 3D tracking. But logically speaking, you wanna keep the main action inside of the frame. Once any part of your body leaves the frame, it ruins the illusion. I assume this would be obvious. I don't think I have to explain why. So you just sort of scrub through and find the section that you're going to use, presumably, whatever, 30 to 40 seconds of you climbing. And then I'll, I'll cut that and set it aside. I then scrub forward in the timeline to a section where I'm not on screen. So it's just the wall. It needs to be the same, exact same frame as when I am climbing the wall. Again, this is why it's absolutely necessary that it needs to be a locked off shot. And then we're off to step two, Photoshop scene rendering. Go to Photoshop and import the photo and extend the frame using the generative fill tool. You'll get there via this icon, pressing shift as you're dragging out the window. And then once you've settled on the final size, you can then type in your prompt. This part is completely dependent on you, what you wanna type in. There is essentially infinite possibilities so it's really just about trial and error if you've ever used an ai such as chat gpt you can see the differences in the intention of prompting how you talk to it and say communicate to it what you're looking for so yeah this is what our first pass looks like it always gives you three options at a time this one works well the second one here is an absolute abomination delete it immediately you'll get a lot of prompts that are completely unusable. This is just part of the process, so you can click the trash can icon and it'll scrap that. You can then click the thumbs up icon on renders that you think are more in line, and then you can type in a bit more or just re-render the same thing. If you press enter again on the same prompt, it'll give you more options, three at a time. Again, reminder, do not generate a human it will show you the stuff of nightmares, unspeakable horrors, okay? Step three, we're going back to After Effects. So you're gonna import your selected frame into After Effects and add it to the composition containing the original clip. You might need to do a bit of adjusting to get them to line up, so I'll simply press T for opacity and turn the opacity to 50 or 60 so I can get this onion skin type of effect. And then from here, I just line them up. I'll put the scene extension on top of the original clip and then trace a mask. Keep in mind the extended scene is much bigger than the composition. We'll address that in the next step, but for now we're focusing on lining everything up and getting a smooth blend between the relevant assets, the original footage, and the rendered extension. The key with this section is to choose the best lines that will hide the stitch as much as possible. So there's a potential for changes in lighting or even some runaway shadows, so I always keep an eye on how well the original footage blends with the render. You'll want to take advantage of the natural abstract pattern of the wall and try to hide all mask lines within the holds.
Then make sure to add an appropriate amount of feathering to the mask. Get to the feathering properties by pressing F on the layer and then add just a few pixels of feathering so it hides any hard lines but not enough so that it starts looking too soft and blurry. As a side note, the difference between a good final product and a bad one is all made in these small details such as the things I mentioned, your camera being fully locked off and not shaky. Once we're satisfied with the combination, we can then use camera moves to add some life to the scene. To do that, we have two options, a null object and a 3D camera. We'll start with the null object as it's the easiest to use for simple moves. The null object is simply a box that you put layers in. And then instead of moving the layers one by one, you move the null object and anything inside of it moves as one big layer. To make this happen, we simply parent any relevant layer to the null object using a pick whip. The pick whip is this icon right here. You simply click and drag it up to the null object and then it gets automatically parented. As you can see, I can now adjust the null object and everything moves as one. This works best for a basic extension when you've tied one frame to your original footage. But if you want to do multiple frames tied to the footage and create more of an infinity zoom, you would definitely want to do the 3D camera, which I will make a video about in the future. With the infinity zoom, it can be a bit tedious repeating the process, but it creates a very cool effect if done intentionally. So yeah, what you create is up to you. If you decide to make this effect, I would love to see your creations. If you have a question regarding this, either DM me on Instagram or leave a comment down below. I'll definitely respond back to you. Thanks for watching this first tutorial. Let me know if it was helpful. And if you have any editing, composition, or animation questions or a tutorial you would like to see, definitely let me know because I would like to do a tutorial every week. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Whew, it's hot. I had to close the window so it wouldn't make so much noise and now it's burning hot. <laughs>